right, so we got time. I guess I'll finish up and we'll talk about the relay. We'll do one more question. I saw over here. No, Okay, we got just enough time for what's going on. All right, so, so as I qualified for the Olympics, I was pretty confident. I wasn't told until close to the end that I was going to be going last, but I had the American record and the most experience, and I would usually been last, so I figured I'd probably be going last. And uh, I figured this fresh guy who was a world record holder most likely would be going last. And as I'm preparing for this race, you know, for the month at the training camp, I'm just thinking about it over and over in my head, and I'm thinking, Man, I, I want to dive in with the lead. But the French team was a favorite, so I kept thinking these terrible thoughts where the French team was in the lead, and I would just shut it off. I wouldn't want to really think about what would happen. So now I'm standing on the blocks in China, and we're live. And as you know, I'm behind the world record holder. So my first thought was, I need to get off these blocks as fast as possible and try to catch them on the relay start. And as I got ready to do my relay start, I had so much adrenaline, I was so pumped up, the crowd was going crazy, my teammates were yelling at me. I jumped in the water, and my first thought was, oh no, I just left early and blew this to Team USA. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe Mark can tell you how he was feeling, but um, I'm pretty sure the coaches were saying, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was a uh, .03 on that relay start. <laughs> So we actually, we, we, like the whole training camp, we relay starts all the time. And by this time, I'm an 11-year veteran on the national team. I've been doing relay starts on electronic timing. And like, I was a really good .15 relay start guy. Like, I was good, but safe. Like, that my whole career, .15, .16, .14. Like, I'm really good. But I was so pumped. I, I went, like, that's why I thought I left early, because my normal was about .15. Freaked out, and I thought, okay, Forget about what just happened, swim your race. And as I started swimming down that first 50, the French guys on my left, I breathed to my right. Not one time did I kind of sneak a peek over there to see where he was because I knew that that would slow me down. So I got to the 50, flipped, pushed off, and realized that he actually increased his lead on me. So of course, I'm thinking, man, there's no way I'm gonna catch this guy. But through my, through my learning, through other experiences, I, I learned to start talking over positive. I said, I feel really good, I feel really strong, just continue your race. Which was really cool because I didn't have to lie to myself, that was the truth. A lot of times, I will have to lie and say, things are great, but they're not. <laughs> so as I'm swimming down that second lap, I can see him, and I'm inching up little by little, and I got back to about his hip, and, uh, 15 meters left, I'm, I'm still right about his hip. And I, I felt something I never felt before. You know, at the beginning of every relay, that, that awesome adrenaline rush, and like I say, it's an amazing feeling to be on a relay with people yelling and you're so excited. Well, that unfortunately wears off. <laughs> 15 meters left, I, I felt that adrenaline once again, and I think that really enabled me to keep my speed all the way to the wall, and uh, thank goodness that French guy crumbled to pieces, so. <laughs> Thank you guys.